How's it going YouTube? Six Speed here and welcome to Top Choice Audio. Today we have a great tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how to recreate a super heavy 808 that you hear in a lot of the beats from artists like Suicide Boys, Puya, Fatnik, and all of those down south super heavy hitting trap artists that we're hearing today. Their tracks are doing great in the in the charts, and uh, this is just a little a little uh, taste of some of the beats that you should be able to recreate after you learn how to make this 808 today. So if you're interested in that at all, make sure to stick around till the end to get all the details on this heavy 808. So without further ado, we may as well jump over in DAW and get started on making this bad boy. So here we are, over in Ableton, um, here's the, the little effects chain um, that we got for the post-processing. A lot of this bass is actually done with the post-processing. Um, and uh, as you can see, I have the low end and the kind of more low mid end of the 808. The specific reason that I have these two separated is it just makes it a lot more easier to manage it and balance it in the mix. Um, so you can get things with the right frequency side chain to the right things so that you don't have, you know, your low end uh, part of your 808 ducking out for the snare because it's not necessary, especially because. Uh, a lot of the frequencies in uh, my snare that are most prominent aren't below 100 uh, hertz, so there's no need to actually really be having that um, part of the 808 ducking out for the snare. Whereas with this one, when I have for the heavy uh, distortion that's used in it to give it more presence in the mix, like you hear in a lot of uh, trap music nowadays, um, you need to kind of have that higher end um, and I don't necessarily need to have it uh, side chain to my kick I probably will because I think the kick usually hits between about 100 to 150 Hertz um, but anyways uh, but it, that it has that higher end right so I'm definitely gonna need it um, side chain to my snare on this one but there's no need to have it there so that is the purpose of separating it is it just makes it easier for um, when you when you're actually going to mix to be able to balance it and keep it from getting muddy and just a huge jumbled mess um, but regardless anyways let's open up the patch here and give you a walkthrough on how to do that so super simple legitimately one oscillator or an analog using the analog BD sign uh, you can use basic shapes as well the main reason that I use BD sign instead of basic shapes is because I can throw this LFO on here um, for for a little bit and it just kind of gives it a little bit more movement as the note plays because as you can see the waveform is moving um, whereas if you have it in basic shapes you're jumping around between a square triangle saw and all those fun different waves whereas this just adds a little bit more harmonic movement to the sound if you will um, instead of just having one constant sound um, or wave table or waveform I guess through the whole sound it just changes it up a little bit makes it a little bit more interesting to the ear um, so yeah uh, make sure to uh, have LFO 1 on to the, the wave position here um, and once you get the wave or the LFO 1 dragged over onto the wave table position for 100% um, drag the rate to about 4 uh, all the other settings pretty much a stock I just have BPM and uh, the LFO anger clicked on and I don't have any kind of trigger mode or LFO mode uh, engaged it can stay off don't forget to invoice or click on uh, mono for voicing because we are dealing with the sub bass so you want to make sure that it's in mono and not coming through in stereo because it can become a super jumbled mess if your sub bass is a little bit too stereo um, nothing going on with the filter or oscillator B at all, which is good. And then for envelope one, this is our basic shapes and the or the basic shape of it and the setting that we're using. Um, this just kind of affects the overall uh, envelope shape of the sound. And then for envelope two, we have that link to the volume on oscillator A, and it just gives it a little bit more of an arch and uh, gives you that that kind of 
tone that you're looking for when you're making an 808 with that kind of uh, the dropout sound. So it kind of the as you're holding the note down, it kind of tails out and has sounds like it has more of a release on it instead of just like being like a constant subtone like uh, you would hear in dubstep, for instance. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to do for um, the the patch on the oscillator tab and then as far as the FX goes I originally just have a multiband compressor on there for 3.5 dB and then an EQ um, that has a low pass at about 500 Hertz and that's all you really need oh yeah and a little bit of a boost at about 54 Hertz um, and that's it for the patch in all honesty um, if you're having any issues with it uh, this is kind of what the patch will sound like if you have no effects on it and you've just recreated the uh, 808 initial patch that I've been used for this tutorial it'll sound something like this So it's not super loud as you can tell because I do have some compressors on there to make it louder, but it is a nice overall just kind of 808 tone that we have going on. Um, so now let's move on to the post-processing for the, uh, the low end part of the sub. Basically I just have these two overdrives on. All the settings are stock except for I've moved the um, point around inside the little field here. Uh, one is at uh, 453 hertz as you can see and then it's at 4.2 for this setting and then the first overdrive that's on there is the 280 hertz and 4.7 for the second setting. Um, the purpose of these two is legitimately it gives it kind of the uh, the distortion, a lot of the distortion that you hear in the 808 um, so it sounds kind of like this with just the overdrive on it so as you can see it gives you that tone that you're looking for uh, the distortion tone that you hear that's super common in trap nowadays and then this kick tight is a little thing I actually learned from Getter from one of his video breakdowns I believe it was his colorblind breakdown um, that he has uploaded to YouTube and he basically shows you how to make a really sick 808 from scratch just originally using basically the same process that I just use and uh, once you throw the kick tight on there as you can see it just brings a lot of the low end back in but still keeps that nice harmonic distortion that you hear. So as you can see with and without it, it actually does make a pretty big difference. It just brings that low end back, which is nice. Um, the next effect that I use is just an EQ8, um, just rolling off uh, everything you know, below 20 hertz because uh, you can't really hear it and it's kind of unnecessary and just kind of jumbles up the mix. So I'm rolling everything off at 20 hertz and then giving it a nice little boost at about 40 and then rolling everything off again at about 100 hertz. Um, and then that's just to make sure that we're filtering out all of the kind of high end of the, the bass so that we can make sure to keep that nice sub, clean sub on lock and give it that heavy, heavy hitting 808 tone that you're usually looking for, which can sometimes get lost when you start adding a lot of distortion to it. So again, that's another reason that I separate it into the low and the mid is because it helps me keep my low end as well as adding that nice harmonic distortion that you're looking for. So after that, um, what we're gonna do is legitimately just a glue compressor, boosting it by one dB, everything else is staying stock. Click on the uh, soft compressor. And then here is a side chain compressor that I have for the kick just so that the 808 low end and the when the kick hit, they aren't interfering with each other because they're both kind of in the same frequency band. So you wanna make sure that you're side chaining your 808 to your kick um, 
so that they're not competing for the same frequency band and you make sure that the 808 ducks down for a you know a two milliseconds or whatever 7.5 milliseconds before um or with the transient so that the kick can hit and you can hear the kick and it punches through instead of um both of them hitting at the same time and having to compete for that frequency so your the volume is basically automated now so the side chain will compress the 808 down every time the hit of the kick hits for those couple milliseconds which then just allows the kick to kind of peek through and then like i've mentioned like 200 times now and i'm rambling they're not kind of competing for each other so here's the the settings that i use for uh, my side chain compressor they're all pretty basic just under a, a three to one uh, actually i'm actually going to boost that up to a three to one ratio uh, make sure it's on peak um, the knees at about six db two millisecond uh, attack with a 7.5 millisecond release not using the EQ and then legitimately just turn the side chain on and side chain it to your kick that you have. Um, this part isn't actually necessary to creating the sound. This is more of a mixing step uh, just to make it sound a little bit cleaner. And uh, like I've said, it, it just makes so your kick and your sub aren't competing for the same frequency. And basically once you do that chain and uh, build it, then this is what your sound will sound like. And uh, that is great for, for the low end kind of subby part of the 808. But as you can see, we've lost a lot of the, uh, distor the harmonic distortion in it. So that's why I have the mid one. And all I did for the mid is I legitimately duplicated this patch, um, but have different post processing on it. Um, I played with the... Um, I believe I played with the overdrive settings a little bit. Yeah, it's changed a little bit. This one is at 485 hertz, and then the second setting is 3.33. And then for the first overdrive, we're at 368 hertz with a second setting of 5.46. Um, and that's just because it's a little bit higher so that we get a little bit more distortion kind of on the higher end of the sound instead of getting the distortion on the low end. Um, I then used a glue compressor uh, just because before in the chain I just had the one but it was still a little bit too quiet for me um, personally because you really want that heavy over compressed 808 sound uh, when you're going for this kind of style. So that's why I duplicated the compressor. If you want, you can boost it this one up more, but most of the time it's a little trick that I've kind of learned is the higher you're trying to boost the compressor and the more information it basically is trying to put into it, um, it kind of creates more artifacts in the song. So that's why it's better to use two compressors separately in the chain with lower makeup gain than it is to use one with higher makeup game because it'll introduce more artifacts um, and can kinda make your sound sound different instead of just boosting the uh, perceived volume. Um, so that's why there's the two glue compressors and then um, you take the kick tight off because you don't wanna have the low end brought back in after using the overdrive. You wanna just keep the distortion and then as you can see, I'm rolling everything off at about 32 hertz and then um, rolling the high end off at about 245 kilohertz. Uh, there's no boost. And then that is basically just for the um, mid-tone of the sub bass. And this is kind of what the mid-tone sounds like on its own. And as you can see, it sounds super distorted and it's kind of crappy on its own, but if you use the two of them together, it, it makes a pretty powerful 808. And you can easily just play with uh, these overdrive settings and it can drastically change the overall tonality of your 808 which is, is pretty fun to experiment with. So if you're looking to kind of play with the sound a little bit and make it your own, that's a good way of going about doing that is just by using overdrive 
and just kind of moving your your frequency around more or less kind of like this and changing it and seeing uh, where it is and and playing with it until you get a tone that you're into a really uh, a good trick too that I've also picked up um, is I like to use erosion and redux um, on it and it just kind of gives it more of like a low duxy more bit reduced distorted kind of sound to it um, so that's always fun to play with make sure to go through and use a lot of these other uh, um, plugins just the stock Ableton plugins are super fun I imagine even just playing with the frequency shifter could do some pretty cool stuff with it but if you're playing with the frequency shifter make sure to be careful because a big thing with this trap is you want to make sure everything is kind of in the same key and in tune because if it's not um, it can actually create some really weird sounds and uh, a lot of the trap producers out there uh, go off about how it's a big no-no so make sure that everything's kind of in tune and in the same key so yeah if you are gonna play with the frequency shifter just be careful with that um, but yeah that is more or less all you have to do to create one of these heavy 808s and uh, just find yourself a cool sample or even write yourself a cool little one with uh, some leads um, and and throw it all together and you can end up with a pretty dope beat sounds like this Bam! Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really appreciate all the views and support you've been showing the new channel. Like I said, we've had lots of content coming out, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. We're always looking for suggestions for future content. If you guys are interested in seeing some videos about general production tips in regards to mastering and mixing, instead of just video breakdowns of beats and uh, how to make certain bases and sound design tutorials, make sure to comment and let us know because uh, we want to know what you guys want to learn because that's what we're trying to do is benefit the community and give back to you guys and help you make the best music you possibly can. So again, thank you all so much for subscribing. Make sure to join the notification crew so you don't miss a single tutorial or anything that's going on with Top Choice Audio because we got lots of content in store for you. My name's Six Speed, and thank you guys again for watching. Have a great night. Six Speed, out.